Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to use Google Doc AI package in the Automation 360 platform. For this demo, we will consider a mortgage processing use case. First, we will take a look at what this Google Doc AI service does and then we will build a bot in Automation 360 platform to invoke this Doc AI service. Here is the landing page for Document AI service on the Google Cloud platform. Essentially, this service extracts the data from images or PDFs and gives you the output in a JSON format. You can use this service for mortgage processing, procurement data capturing and also for contract lifecycle management just to give you a few examples. To start with, you will need an account on the Google Cloud platform and then you will need the service account key. We will not look at how to create the service account key in this demo, but I will leave you the link in the description to see how you can create that. As a first step, we need to create processors. Again, I will give you the link for this as well so that you can log in to the Google Cloud platform and just click on this link so that it will take you to the processors page. I'll click on go to the processors page. Here you can create a new processor by clicking on this button create processor and then this service will give you the options of what are the different kind of images or the documents it can process. It has both general out of the box processors as well as some specialized processors as you can see. In this example, we will use this 1003 parser which is a universal loan application parser and also we will try 1040 parser. This is the income tax filing document processor. First I will select the 1003 parser and then I will give it a name. I will call it as parser 1003 demo. I'll leave the region as US and then click on create. Once the service is created, you will need the ID so that you can invoke this service from the Automation 360 platform. I'll copy this one into a notepad and I'll make a note that this is related to 1003. I'll go back to the processors and now I'll create a processor for processing the documents like 1040 form. I'll click on create processor. I will select the 1040 parser and then give it a name parser 1040 demo. Click on create. Again, once it is ready, I will copy this ID and paste it into my notepad. I need this later when I'm building my bot. So this is what I will need to start invoking this service from my bot. So now I will go back to the Automation 360 platform. Let's see how we can use this cool Doc AI package. I will type Google Doc. You will see this package, Google Doc AI. You should only see one package. I just have this uh, other test package in my control room, but you will have only one, which has three actions, connect, disconnect, and extract. Before we start using this package, let's uh, follow the best practices and we will start writing the steps to perform the entire exercise. That is, first we would have to connect to the service and then we have to extract the data from these documents and then disconnect the service. Let me also show you how these forms look like so that you will understand what we are trying to do and what's the information we are going to extract. I will provide you with this sample PDFs as well so that you can try out the same exercise. So this is the 1040 form which is like an income tax return document and in this document we will extract the information like uh, first name, 
the address and the social security number. I mean, this service will give you the entire information from this document for just demo purpose. We'll only extract this three fields. Similarly, let me show you the 1003 form. So this is the universal residential loan application. So from this document, we'll try to extract the amount, the tenure for the loan and also the address here. So let's go back to my bot. And then here I'll start with adding some steps. So I'll add three steps initially. And I'll use the list view. For the first step, I'll call it as connect to doc AI. For the second step, I'll call it as extract data from doc AI. And then the third step, I'll call it as disconnect from doc AI. Now let's use the Google doc AI package. I'll type Google doc again here. I'll drag and drop this connect in the first step, disconnect in the third step and extract in the second step. So let's go to the first one and we will configure this. To use the Google doc AI service, we will need a service account and a service account key file. So let's reference this file, which I have stored it in my local system. So I'll click on browse. I'll go to my C drive and then my temp folder. And I have this file here. I'll click on open. And then I need to create a session. I'll just call it as default. I'll copy this one. And then we also need to mention this session name in the disconnect command as well. So I'll just click on disconnect and double check it's the same name that is default. I'll click on save. Now let's start extracting the data from the two files which I showed you earlier. So let me show you these files. So these are the two files I have in this specific folder which I want to extract the information from. I'll just copy this part for now. Since I have multiple documents to be processed, I'll use a loop action. I'll drag and drop the loop above the Google document AI extraction. And then I want to select all the files in a specific folder. For that, I'm going to select uh, for each file in the folder. And then the folder path, I'm going to mention it here. And then any file which is there in this folder, I want to capture the file name as well as the extension name. For that, I'm going to click on multiple variables and then I'll start adding the variable mapping. I'll call it as uh, file name. And then I'll create a variable called s file name. Click on create and select. I'll click on add here and then similarly I'll add the key for the extension as well. I'll call this as file extension and then click on this create variable icon. I'll call this as s file extension. Click on create and select and then click on add. So now we have uh, two variables mapped that is file name and the file extension. Now we can extract the information from these two files. But because each document has to be sent to the corresponding parser, we want to know which document the bot is dealing so that we can assign it to the right parser. So what I'll do is I'll use a if action to identify the document, then I'll pass it to the corresponding parser. I'll look for the if action. I'll drag and drop this within the loop. 
if I'll choose based on the file name because I know my file names have the form number in it. For example, the first document has the file name as 1040 and the second document includes the form number that is 1003. I'll select the condition as string. I'll type string here and then select the string condition. In the source value, we will check if the file name has the form number which we need. I'll click on F2 and select the file name. Click on yes insert. In the operator, I'll say includes and then I'll add 1040. I don't need to match the case. So I'll just ignore this. So now if the file name includes the 1040, then I want to pass this document to the 1040 parser we have created earlier. So I'll drag and drop this Google document AI extract within the if loop and then let's select the document file path. I'll click on desktop file and then we need to enter the file path. So this is the path within which the documents are available and then let's select the file name and the extension name so that it is not a hard coded value but instead a dynamic value based on whichever file it is selecting within the loop. So I'll select this yes file name click on yes insert. Let me just expand this here and then click on dot and then again I'll select the file extension here click on yes insert. So now we have the required path so that every time it comes to this particular action it will check for that corresponding file and then it will be sent to the corresponding parser. Now let's look at the other parameters which we need to configure. We need the project id, processor id and then we have to save the outcome to a variable. Project ID. This is the project ID on your Google Cloud Platform account. So let's go to the Google Cloud Platform account and then look at the project ID. If you can see here, if I just click on here, you should be able to see the ID which you are connected to. So what I'll do is like I'll copy this ID and then come back and save it into the project ID file. Similarly, the processor ID, we stored it before. So let me open the notepad and then copy the processor ID from here. And then for now, I am just going to save it as insecure string. However, it's always recommended to use it uh, from a credential vault. And then I'll save this outcome from the parser into a variable. I'll call this as S1040 output and then click on create and select. So now the bot is going to send the document to this 1040 parser and then once the response is sent back that is going to be stored in this variable. I'll click on save. Once we have the response from the doc AI service we can look at the output and then extract the required information. Let me show you how the output looks like and then we will extract the required information. Here is the 1040 form and the information we are going to extract are the name, the social security number and the address. And here is the output from the service you will see like there will be a whole bunch of information. Scroll down to the section where it starts with entities. So this is where the required information is available for us. So let's look at what is the information which is extracted here. So here it says 2019 that is the type is year and the mentioned text is 2019. And then you will also notice that here the ID is zero that is like within the entities at index zero if you want to extract the year that is 2019 then you will have to use mention text as the key so that you can get the value 2019. 
So in my bot, to extract this kind of information, we will need to use the package called JSON. So let me go to the actions panel and type JSON and you will have this action package called JSON which will have uh, four actions start session, end session, get node list and also get node value. For us we need to extract specific values so we are going to use this action called get node value. And before I use this particular action, I just want to add one more step so that we can keep the section of extracting the different fields in a separate section. So what I'll do is like I'll just drag and drop it here. I'll call it as uh, extracting data from 1040 output. I'll click on save and then I'll go to the JSON package. I'll first use the start act session action and I'll also use the get node value and the end session at the bottom. So to start the session, I will have to first say which is the variable or the file which contains the output which is in a JSON format. So let's see what is the variable name which we have created here. As you can see we have created a variable called yes1040 output. So let's pass this variable to this action that is JSON start session. I'll select the option as text and then I'll identify this variable that is yes1040 output. Click on yes insert. And then we want to create a JSON object session. So I'll call this as 1040 session. And we will have to use this in all the different actions within this package. So I'll go here and the session name, I'll just change it here. And also in the end session, I'm going to change it to the same session name I've used earlier. Now let's get to the get node value action. So here we have to specify what is the key or the path from which we want to extract the data. As I mentioned earlier, we will use this high level key that is entities and then paste it here. And then as seen earlier, because this is the first ID that is index zero, we have the information that is year. Similarly, let's see where we can find the first name. I'll scroll down. I'll see that the next information which is available is single. That is the filing status checkbox. So which we have it here. This is the filing status checkbox. Scroll down. Next, let's look at the next field available. So here we have the Mary Jane, which is the first name. So this is connected to the key mentioned text and the index is zero. So we will have to use this index zero in entities and then I use this key called mentioned text. I'll just copy this mentioned text and go back to my bot. In the entities, in the square brackets, I'm going to use two because this is the index from which I want to enter the information and then add a dot and then add this mention text. So this is how you will be able to extract the first name from the JSON output received from the 1040 parser. And I'll add this to a new variable and I'll call this as first name. Click on create and select. So similarly, we want to extract two more fields. So I'm just going to copy this action and then paste it just below these. And now let's fix one by one. We want to capture the SSN next. So let's see where this SSN is available in the output. I will scroll down until I see this SSN. As you can see here, we can uh, the SSN value is available 
and same mentioned text let's look at the index so the index is 7 so I'll update the bot to the index 7 here I'll copy the same key path which I had mentioned earlier here I'll copy this and then paste it here and then change it to 7 and then we will assign this to a variable that is I'll call this as s ssn and then click on create and select let's select the total income from this particular document and as you can see the total income is available here and let's take a look at the index that is 9 so I'll go back to my bot and then I'll paste this same path which we had copied earlier change the index to 9 and this I'll call it as S total income click on create and select so now we have all the three fields that is the name the SSN and the income of the applicant and after this let's look at the result so what we will do is like we can store this result into a text file for that I'm going to use the action called log to file I'll drag and drop it here and the file path I'll just save it into my local system I have created a folder here called a mortgage output within the temp folder just copy this here as the path I'll call this as output data dot txt and what's the information we want to enter because this information is extracted from the 1040 parcel I just want to enter the first field as 1040 parcel and then I'll leave some space I'll add a pipe symbol I'll leave some more space and then I'll start adding the other fields that is the first name click on yes insert I'll add some space and a pipe and then I'll add the SSN click on yes insert add some space and the pipe and then add the total income field click on yes insert so now we have all this three fields along with the fixed text called 1040 parser which will be saved into the text file which we in the path we have just mentioned here I'll click on save so this is all about extracting data from one parser that is 1040 parser so the other parser which we have created is 1003 so let's use a else command and then we will try to extract the information from 1003 parser so I'll drag and drop this here you have to be uh, pretty clear about the exact location where you're going to add only then uh, the looping will work fine as you can see here I've just dragged and dropped it here and then I need all the same steps to be performed again so what I'm going to do is like I'll just copy all this steps click on copy and then I'll add it within this else section and in the else section we'll again select the string condition if it if the file name contains 1003 so I'll select the source value as uh, file name and the operator as contain includes and then I'll add this as 1003 as the target value I'll click on save so now let's configure the Google document AI extract attributes so the only thing which I have to change is the processor ID and where the output should be stored so let me get the parser ID here so this is the one which we had stored earlier I'll update this in the processor ID section and I'll also create a new variable to store the output from the parser I'll call this as yes1003 output and click on create and 
select. Now similarly let's extract the information from three different fields. I'll just change the step here to 1003 and then also I'll change the session names in this so that we have unique sessions for each of the JSON parsers. I'll call this as 1003. I'll copy this session name and then paste it in all the sessions. Now in the start session action, we want to provide the input here. So earlier we had added it as a different variable. So now we needed to select the output from the 1003 parser. So that I'm going to select it as yes 1003 output and then it's going to be uh, using the session name called 1003 session. So click on save. Now let's uh, look at which are the fields which we need. I'll just go back to my notepad where I have stored which are the fields I want to extract. So the first one is I want to extract the loan amount which is available in the index 0, the loan term which is available in the index 2 and the property address which is available in index 3. I'll show you the sample output first and this is the extract. Scroll down to the section where you will see the word entities. So again just like the previous uh, file we have seen so the first we want to extract the loan amount and uh, this is available in the index 0. So let's go back to our bot and then we will say this entities of 0 and then this we are going to save it into a variable called s loan amount. Click on create and save similarly let's scroll down to identify the term which is available in the index 2 as uh, noted before so as you can see here 180 months is the loan period and this is the index 2 so i'll come here to the second field and then add this as entities of 2 and then create a variable called loan term click on create and select and similarly let's get the last field that is the address here we can see there is the property address which is available in the mention text key and this is the index 3 so i'll change this for the last one entities of 3 and then i'll add this to a variable called uh, yes address click on create and save and then in the log2 file we'll call this 1003 parser then let's change each of these variable first as the loan amount click on yes insert and then the loan term click on yes insert and the last one is the property address that is the variable called yes address click on yes insert and click on save so this is the output folder into which uh, we our bot is going to create a file and then add the information extracted from both the parsers before we run the bot there's one small correction to be done so in the json end session action on line number 21 so there was a typo because i had copied it over from 1040 session so i just have fixed this uh, session name to include 1003 session and now we are good to go uh, let me click on run bot is going to be downloaded from the cloud to your local system and then it'll start interacting with the files in your local system it will pass the files one by one to the google doc ai parsers it will receive the information back and then it's going to parse the required information using the actions which we have used from the json package so once the bot completes the execution let's go and review the results now that the execution is completed let's check the results so here is the output file which it has just created. I'll open it here 
And now we can see that the first line was extracted using the 1040 parser and the second line is using the 1003 parser. And just for the demonstration purpose, we will end it at getting the output to a text file. However, in a real use case, you can extend this to take this information and update it in any of the real time systems in your organization. I hope uh, this was useful for you. Thank you for watching and go be great. Thank you for visiting the Automation Anywhere YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button and learn how to build your own digital workforce with our automation success platform. Get your free demo today at automationanywhere.com.